Then there's how disputes are resolved in, in different systems of law. So nationally, you have courts and tribunals at different levels, from local court to high court in Australia, but they would be called different things in different countries. And there's a hierarchy uh, among those different courts. Uh, and you have alternative dispute resolution, negotiation, mediation, conciliation, arbitration. In international law, you do have courts and tribunals, but there's no strict hierarchy. Is there a, is there a space court? Well, there is a, uh, so, so the permanent court of arbitration has rules specific for resolution of space disputes. Okay, all right. But there's no specific space court. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, we hear like the international, you know, um, human rights courts and things like that. There's not a International no. Space Court. No, there's not. No, there's not. But there's, there are also um, commercial courts. So Dubai, for example, has set up a, um, a court uh, in inverted commas for resolution of state of, of space disputes. Okay. But they do that as a commercial service. And it's, it's not really legally uh, binding necessarily. Okay. So again, kind of, yeah, resolution between these partners, but in a non... So moder kind of playing middle yes. peacekeeper almost. Right, right, exactly. But, uh, you know, given how the space industry globally is booming, yeah. that's, uh, that's a sector in itself. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Booming as well. Yes. And so, you know, in, in, in the space industry, there is scope for alternative dispute resolution as well, even in international law. Uh, okay. And then finally, enforcement. So... Uh, in national law, you, you've got police, you've got customs officials, quarantine agriculture, biosecurity officials, fisheries officials, border security officials, other government officials, for example, the Australian Space Agency yes. for space activities, even health officials uh, in respect of something yes. like COVID-19. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What is it in international law, though? Right. In international law, enforcement gets tricky. And, <laughs> and this, is, uh, this is my attempt to, to explain it. So okay. on the one hand, you have a spectrum of actions that might be taken against you. On okay. the one hand, there might be actions that are unfriendly but not unlawful. Okay. There might be things that are an internationally wrongful act because they're a breach of a treaty obligation mm -hmm. or a breach of customary international law and interference with your sovereign rights. Um, they might involve a threat or use of force and maybe even amount to aggression. Um, even worse than that is the threat of or, or anticipated armed attack or actual armed attack. So, so we're kind of going from unintentional to intentional kind of in this spectrum is that the idea right right okay. yes yes right. And, and and in terms of level of violence as yes, well that's there's right. a higher level of violence there so the spectrum is from peace to armed conflict yeah, between okay. states and so by this spectrum then clearly there's different ways of enforcement right right so it's not necessarily a direct link between these so any of these could be resolved by diplomacy. That's right, yep. Um, but you would just assume if you're at this point, you may have passed the diplomacy point right. as well, right? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you, you, you have uh, retortion, which is essentially, you've done something bad to us, we're going to do something bad to you. Okay. Um, <laughs> revenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. yeah. Uh, and, but, but it still has to be lawful. Yep, um, lawful revenge, okay. Yes. All right. uh, then you've got international legal tribunals, so I'm going to take you to court, I'm yep. going to sue you. Um, protective measures. So uh, you can have a means of a satellite defending itself or protecting itself. Okay. The example, I'm trying to think of a good sort of space example, but the example that you would use terrestrially um, is if you had a checkpoint and the bollards come out of the, the ground. Okay. Yeah, if, yeah, yeah. If, if a car runs into the bollards, then it's not as though you've used force against the car. The driver of the car was stupid enough to... to run into the protective measure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. All yes, right. yes. So, exactly. if, so if you had space bollards around your satellite and someone crashed into it right. and they were damaged, not you, that would be the same idea, right? Yes. That you were doing it to defend yourself, not to 
attack them. Right, right. But it's purely a protective measure. It's, 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 not, it, it's, a, it's a relatively passive yep. thing. Okay. Um, then you have countermeasures, and countermeasures are often used in a more technical sense, but yeah. in a legal sense, what, what it means is you've done something that is an internationally wrongful act against me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do an internationally wrongful act against you. Oh, um, okay. So, so instead of the lawful revenge, this is unlawful revenge? In, in a way, okay. yes. yes. But, but your failure to comply with the law that is applicable to you mm -hmm. um, cannot rise to a threat or use of force. It still needs to be below the threshold of violence. Okay. All right. Uh, in order to be a lawful countermeasure. All right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and the countermeasure has to be um, for the purpose of bringing the other party back into compliance. It's not just a, a revenge thing or yep. a punitive thing. It's actually to bring them back into compliance. Okay. And so sometimes you may have to then overstep the lawful bounds to do that, but in a lawful kind of way right so so to to raise a uh, an example that is topical now yep. it may not be topical when you're <laughs> watching this video but uh in the ukraine yes russia russia has um invaded ukraine and there are questions about what countries that support ukraine can do yep okay if they characterize what russia has done as an internationally wrongful act mm -hmm then the fact that they might be breaching their neutrality by supporting Ukraine could be seen as a countermeasure. Okay. Yeah, In other yeah, words, yeah, yeah. Ukraine has done the wrong thing. We're going to breach our neutrality and, and yeah, support right. Ukraine. And had, they, had Russia not done that, we would have remained neutral. Right. Right. Yeah, they're not doing it to be the aggressor. They're doing it in a way of a defensive balance. Right, right. And this is this is relevant to the space context because yeah. of course one way that a country might support the U Ukraine is yes. to provide access to space services That's like right. Starlink satellites. Yes, for exactly. So yeah, it's definitely something there a private neutral company is being involved because what they see is an act of aggression and they're balancing it out in a lawfully kind of way. But they're right. not overstepping the bounds. They're not attacking. No. Russia, in that case, they're just right. providing assistance. Yes, yeah, okay. yes, exactly. And then there are concepts of distress and necessity, and, and these sorts of things might arise. Distress in the case where maybe your astronauts have come down in another country's territory. Oh, okay. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah, need yeah, yeah. to rescue your astronauts. Yep. And normally, it would be a breach of sovereignty to go into the territory of another state yeah. without their permission but if you're doing it on the basis that your astronauts are in distress and you're saying we don't have time to get permission Perm yeah exactly we're just going in to go and get them. and again the idea is yes you're breaching law but you're doing it for a very reasonable way that in normal cases would be lawful but you just don't have that time right yeah. right has, has that happened uh not that i am yeah. i'm aware of but you can imagine i mean there are there are you know, evacuation procedures for their National Space Station, right? And if they had yes. to evacuate down unplanned, you would have to rescue them wherever you were. They could end up in, in a jurisdiction other than where they had in That's the right, exactly. Right, exactly. Necessity might be more relevant in the space context where there's a Earth-ending asteroid uh, okay. <laughs> headed for yep. planet Earth. And we will look at this later in the course as well, yes. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And, and so... Uh, normally, you wouldn't be allowed to go and use nuclear weapons in outer space. That's right. But if you use nuclear weapons to change the course of the asteroid, then you would justify it as a plea of necessity. On yeah. a as a plea of necessity, yes. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. So um, again, th these seem less that they're actually wrong, right? You know, these yeah. are like technically legally wrong, but you can kind of understand why you would want to rescue your astronauts if yeah. they're in distress you know, just as you would a sailor in the ocean mm. and why you'd want to deflect an asteroid if it was headed for Earth, right? Right. So, yeah, okay, I see that. Yes. And then, then uh, yeah. if, if the country does something that amounts to aggression, then you could have it recognized as a crime of aggression. Okay. And there are certain things that flow from that. We, we don't need to go into the detail of that. Yeah. Um, 
Then you have national and collective self-defense. So if, if one country attacks you and maybe attacks your satellites and your space infrastructure, you, you as a state have an inherent right of national self-defense. Okay. All right. Yeah. So that's, that's mm. fairly straightforward. It's fairly intuitive. Yeah, that you yeah, want yeah. To defend yourself. But even, even better, if you could, is to have the support of the UN um, when you do that sort of thing. So you get a, a resolution from the UN Security Council. And so essentially this is the same case then in space. If someone attacks your satellites, you could say UN Security Council support my motion to then go and attack X because they attacked me. So the UN Security Council has a responsibility to the international community to resolve threats to international peace and security. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, and, and so if there is a threat to international peace and security, you have a responsibility to go to the UN Security Council and say, um, we need a resolution. If, if the UN Security Council passes a resolution, then all the member states of the United Nations are obliged to support that resolution. Okay. And that resolution could at its most say, uh, it could authorize a, a state or a coalition of states to use all necessary measures. If, if you're yeah, after a UN Security Council resolution for this sort of thing, the nirvana in that context is one that says, you're authorized to use all necessary measures. Okay. So, and peace and security in this case most definitely includes space. Right, absolutely. Interesting. Yes. So that's enforcement in the international context. Great.